Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm very happy to be here and to present what we did uh, in the working group four. Uh, in working group four, we tried to move from the principles and the, let's say, design and implementation approach to um, technologies. So actual products to be included in the, in the, in the buildings. Um, the, of the, the overall objective of the, uh, of the working group four was, as the title uh, said, uh, to rethink uh, uh, the, the technology solutions uh, and then explore the potential and the impact uh, of uh, such technologies uh, uh, in order to achieve a regenerative uh, indoor environment, uh, both in new and, and existing buildings. And uh, we defined this, uh, this sketch uh, uh, to represent what we, what we were doing. Uh, and you can see there's uh, on one side uh, the, uh, the building uh, and the indoor environment uh, with the, let's say, the need uh, and uh, the goal uh, to create a satisfactory uh, indoor environment uh, for different kind of uh, building occupants. On the other side, there's the, the world with the, the earth, with mm, its natural sources. And, um, and then the idea is the, to evaluate the effect of the, mm, some technology solution sets uh, for the indoor environment uh, on one side, but on the other side, uh, how the production, the transportation and the implementation of the technology solution sets uh, uh, how these activities can impact uh, um, uh, the natural sources. And we, we try to evaluate both uh, the environmental and social uh, impact uh, as well as the economical impact. Uh, and, and then trying to define these uh, circularities um, between the, these, two, um, uh, these two aspects. Um, to drive our, our work uh, uh, at the beginning, uh, we defined uh, five main questions. Uh, what is a regenerative environment was the first one. Uh, then is it univocal or can it have different nuances? How technologies can contribute to achieve a regenerative indoor environment? What is a good set of solutions uh, for a regenerative indoor environment? Uh, and then what should be the impact of, of a regenerative technology? So I will go through uh, these five questions in, in my presentation, starting with the definition of a, of a regenerative indoor environment. And for such a definition, we investigated different possible key performance indicators uh, uh, able to describe the, and to uh, define the, the, the quality of the indoor environment. Uh, and the idea was to move uh, from uh, the, the mindset uh, of reducing or limiting uh, the health related impacts uh, for, for, the, for the building occupants uh, and move to, um, let's say, uh, define something that could improve uh, the, the quality of life of the, of the building occupants. And so thinking uh, uh, about uh, health generation and well-being uh, for, the, for the building users. Uh, so starting from this, uh, let's say, change of paradigm, uh, we uh, um, try to evaluate uh, different uh, aspects uh, related to indoor environment. And so the, the, the first four are the classical ones, uh, so indoor air quality. Uh, then agrothermal environment, visual environment, acoustic environment, and then we added to, to these four uh, the human nature uh, environment. Each aspect uh, um, has some sub aspects. Uh, so related to indoor quality, as you can see in the slide, uh, contaminants uh, and um, let's say the, the, the level of uh, outdoor uh, air pollutants, uh, so how can how these can affect uh, the indoor uh, air quality and so on and so forth with the other uh, aspects. 
what is important to to highlight uh, is that uh, we 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 had uh, not only let's say physical parameters and chemical parameters, but also uh, the the human perspective. So. Uh, the occupant satisfaction uh, related to indoor air quality, related to agrothermal environment, uh, and related to the other uh, aspects I mentioned before. Uh, so this is important to 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 highlight uh, uh, that there are some uh, objective measurements uh, of the indoor environmental quality, but there is also the subjective part, so the perception of the occupant that could be also. Uh, very different uh, uh, compared to the, let's say, objective uh, uh, measurements. And, and related to the human nature environment, uh, uh, what we highlighted as a very important was the connectivity to nature. Uh, and so uh, our nature could be included in the building, uh, in the design of the building, as well as uh, how uh, nature ca can be, uh, can be, seen uh, from 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 the building so i was uh, the the interaction between the building and the outdoor context uh, even if i mean is a urban context uh, and so very different from from a rural context um for each sub aspects uh, we defined the uh, kpis uh, and for the occupants uh, satisfaction the kpi kpi uh, is the percentage of uh, satisfied people. So this is uh, uh, always the same uh, and uh, was also referred to different uh, aspects uh, uh, of the indoor environmental quality. And for the, what I defined the objective uh, evaluation, we defined the key performance indicators, uh, uh, very, let's say, <coughs> precise and, and, and quantitative. So you can see in the slide, uh, and you can also see in a booklet we define at the uh, at the end of the as final, let's say, output uh, of our work. Um, yeah, and for each uh, KPIs, uh, we define it also uh, thresholds. So um, let's say. Uh, limits uh, uh, over uh, which uh, the conditions are not, let me say, regenerative. Uh, of course, it is also a matter of combinations uh, of parameters. Uh, and this is something that is not uh, already, let's say, uh, well-defined uh, in, in, in the literature. So there's a lot of uh, research activities on the matter, how to combine uh, different uh, different aspects and sub aspects uh, of uh, related to the indoor environmental quality, and you can see there there's um, some let's say standards. Uh, there there are some let's say uh, literature documentations, uh, and th th there are certification also related to the indoor environmental quality, but uh, still uh, there's a lot of as I said a lot of um, research activities uh, mainly related to the uh, kind of indicators to be considered and kind of combination among, uh, among different uh, indicators. Uh, so uh, in a way, but we, at the end, we uh, defined our vision of what a regenerative environment should be. And you can, you can find the details uh, on the booklet, as I mentioned before. Uh, Second question, uh, is it something, let's say, fixed and un univocal or can have different nuances? And of course the answer is that uh, it depends on the context, uh, it depends uh, on the kind of occupants uh, and background of the occupants uh, and, and so on and so forth. So as I reported in the slide, uh, uh, I do think this uh, statement by Cole and Lorch uh, uh, is quite, uh, let's say, uh, representative of the concept I'm trying to, to explain. So the built environment can be characterized as the embodiment of human values and ingenuity uh, as represented by the knowledge uh, and priorities of its creators. So it depends on the designers from one side. So uh, the designer uh, decide what is a, uh, a good built environment because of um, uh, the background of the designer, 
And then the occupants uh, um, have their perception of what is happening uh, uh, inside the building. And, and so they can evaluate as a satisfactory or not a, a specific condition, a specific combination of parameters. This makes uh, the situation very, very dynamic uh, and the, the condition in different uh, contexts quite different. Uh, and of course, also depending on the overall, uh, uh, overall condition. So it can have a, a long-term uh, uh, dynamics as well as a short-term dynamics. Uh, I reported uh, here, sorry, the title is in Italian, uh, but was uh, a news of a few days ago uh, saying, okay, in Germany, uh, they are used uh, to open the window for uh, a too long time. So uh, their air flow rate is too high, but th there are some also cultural reasons. There are some, let's say, uh, small plants uh, in front of the window, so they, 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 they cannot open completely the window, so they use uh, other kind of uh, openings, uh, so um, small openings, uh, and so they have to keep a lo longer time uh, open at the window, and this makes also the walls uh, uh, mm, um, uh, cooler, uh, and, and so this affect the energy efficiency of the whole building. So there's uh, some cultural habit uh, affecting um, some, let's say, uh, good uh, design uh, of uh, an energy efficient building as well as uh, of a regenerative building. So this is sort of, a, let's say, um, contrast uh, between biophilia and uh, and energy efficiencies, but, but of course, is, there's, as I said, uh, some cultural and, and context uh, reasons to be very well analyzed uh, in order to uh, design and maintain uh, and manage uh, a, a regenerative building. And yeah, we are studying this uh, in this project, uh, the name is Culturally, so we are trying to evaluate uh, also the uh, cultural context uh, and to define the design of these very efficient buildings or so plus energy houses, uh, uh, depending also on the cultural cultural context. Uh, then uh, we uh, we went to 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 the technology aspect uh, and to to the technology solution sets uh, and of course technologies in buildings uh, are. Uh, the elements impacting uh, both human perception, so the subjective part and the uh, key performance indicators I, I showed before, uh, so the uh, objective part. Uh, so in order to evaluate uh, the technologies, we move from environmental aspects, uh, I already presented, uh, to specific functions uh, to be answered by, by the technologies. And for example, uh, related to indoor air quality, remove or absorb pollutants, uh, change air in the room, related to hydrothermal environment, uh, provide des des desirable uh, indoor conditions, uh, related to visual environment, uh, control uh, solar gain and control also natural lighting, uh, related to acoustic environment, uh, for example, uh, uh, prevent noise, absorb noise, or enable good indoor soundscape. Uh, so also managing uh, the openings in order to have this good indoor soundscape. And related to human nature environment, uh, allow view a light, uh, include natural elements in the building uh, with uh, the contradictions I, I already presented. Uh, so, um, Considering the functions, uh, uh, we evaluated different subsystems. Uh, so the envelope, uh, the HVAC system, the control system, uh, and the finishing. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, the building envelope, you know, uh, um, the building envelope has different, uh, uh, different features uh, and uh, um, has to um, face different functions. Uh, thermal comfort, visual comfort, acoustic comfort, fresh air supply. So, um, um, so all these aspects uh, uh, are regulated by the, by the, by the envelope. Uh, so we try to identify uh, in, the, in the literature and in the, on the market, uh, particular or the, the kind of technologies, kind of uh, products and solutions uh, able to, to answer the functions I, I, I showed before. And we put this 
products and technologies in a repository. We are still working on that. Uh, and, uh, and then we are going to um, uh, embed uh, this uh, repository in the Restore website. Uh, so you can also access the, the repositories. And this is a sort of uh, inspiration uh, for, uh, for the designers in order to find uh, advanced solutions uh, uh, facing uh, the environmental aspects uh, I, I, I showed uh, and um, uh, enabling uh, the functions related to the environmental aspects. This is just an example, uh, uh, kind of uh, um, envelope system, uh, facade system uh, um, that was studied uh, in the TU Delta uh, research activities. Uh, and I don't want to go in detail, uh, but just to give you an example of kind of information you can find uh, in the in the repository, and with some pictures, uh, with some technical drawings, uh, and uh, um, with uh, an evaluation of uh, how these kind of uh, envelope systems can contribute uh, to a regenerative uh, environment. So, so in this case, can contribute to indoor air quality, uh, can contribute to uh, agrothermal environment to acoustic environment as well as uh, including some elements of the HVAC uh, uh, system and uh, uh, some uh, technology enabling the harvesting of uh, renewable sources, for example, the PV uh, panels in this specific case. Um, so uh, you you can find the solutions uh, in the in the repository uh, and. Also, the, 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 the different functions this, this solution can have. Uh, and the aim, uh, uh, um, in order to understand why to, to use these solutions in different, uh, different cases. Uh, so um, we define the regenerative uh, environment, uh, and then uh, um, uh, the technologies uh, in order to uh, achieve the uh, the parameters I mentioned, uh, the, the, the level of the parameters I mentioned. Uh, and then we study how to assess uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the quality of the indoor environment. And there are two systems. So through uh, post-occupancy evaluation service, so asking uh, the perception of, uh, to the building occupants, or, uh, and I would say, uh, performing measurements uh, uh, of the uh, indoor environmental quality. And there are a lot of uh, kind of uh, possible uh, uh, instruments and tools you can use, uh, both for continuous uh, evaluation as well as for uh, spot evaluation of specific parameters. I guess you already, let's say, uh, you're already familiar with most of the uh, technologies showed uh, in, this, in this slide. Uh, related to the human behaviors, uh, of course, uh, as I said, this is the subjective part. Uh, so um, different kind of occupants, different kind of uh, perception of the indoor uh, environmental quality. Uh, and we also try to structure uh, the, the the knowledge uh, in, in this field uh, and to present in an organized way uh, the, possible, um, the possible means and the possible approaches uh, uh, for performing post-occupancy evaluation in, in, um, in different way. Again, you can find details uh, in, the, in the final booklet uh, uh, we define. Uh, yeah, these slides just to show you that there could be very different uh, perception of different parameters uh, 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 for the same uh, for the same kind of buildings. So the the variation could be uh, really very 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 high. So it is really important to start from the local um, conditions uh, to define very well uh, the boundary conditions before starting uh, a design of a of a regenerative building. Um, then, related to the solution sets, uh, we what we did uh, was to analyze the existing uh, cases, so existing buildings, uh, and we collected the existing building uh, features uh, in a, in an atlas. Uh, 
So this is uh, accessible through the Restore website. Uh, so you can, you can see, you can find different buildings in the world and there are some technical sheets uh, related to the, um, um, to the feature of the building, to the technologies included in the building uh, and to the main uh, uh, parameters related to the building. So again, could be a, a source of inspiration for, for, a, uh, for a design process. Uh, related to the impact, uh, this is something that, that usually uh, an owner, uh, sorry, uh, see, an owner or a client uh, of a designer, uh, I mean, not that often take care, uh, but something that could be uh, even more uh, um, proposed. And, and so this is why there are a lot of, again, research activities on, on, in this field. Uh, uh, related to the uh, environmental impact uh, in the life cycle, as well as related to the um, economic impact in the life cycle. So it is important to evaluate not only the uh, initial investment, but also uh, the cost and the value of the building in the life cycle. So uh, also to evaluate, uh, okay, maybe you are, uh, you are doing a, a higher uh, initial investment, but this produce uh, a lower uh, maintenance cost uh, in the life cycle uh, of the building and then you can have maybe a residual value related to the different uh, components of the building and this could be used uh, uh, as I said as, a, as an asset uh, uh, value and then of course there's also the uh, social uh, life cycle assessment related to the production of the technologies as well as related to the to the building itself and all these uh, will produce the actual life cycle uh, overall assessment uh, of, uh, of the building. As I said, uh, uh, what I presented is included in the working group for um, uh, booklet. Uh, the title is Regenerative Technologies for the Indoor Environment. So I do hope uh, this will be an interesting reading. You can download uh, the booklet uh, from the EU Restore uh, website. And that's it by my side. Uh, if there's any question, of course, I'm, I'm here and uh, available and happy to answer. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. Uh, thank you for your presentations and an overview of the very complex and comprehensive work that you did uh, within your working group four. So do we have any question? Here? No? So I have one question for you, Roberto. So we understand that uh, the technology is the key to promote uh, this paradigm shift from less bad to more good uh, regenerative building. But uh, can we understand uh, where is the limit when the cost of these emerging technologies put in the shadow all other benefits? Yeah, uh, I mean, this is a very good question and very good point. Uh, um, in the project I mentioned, uh, we are trying to evaluate uh, in a comprehensive way, uh, from one side, benefits of uh, technologies to achieve a very high uh, target uh, from sustainability and efficiency point of view and on the other side to evaluate uh, uh, their impact. And both are very uh, complicated. And uh, the idea uh, would be to monetize everything. So to use, uh, let's say, uh, yeah, the, the monetization in order to uh, put together uh, the, the, the impacts and the benefits, uh, but it, this is, let's say, not uh, that trivial and something uh, request, uh, I mean, very much more uh, research activities, uh, but for sure it's something that the real estate uh, um, companies and players are asking. They are also asking, uh, please give us uh, some uh, metrics in order to evaluate, uh, okay, we can invest more in technologies because we would like to achieve a regenerative uh, 
indoor environment, uh, but you have to quantify the benefits. Uh, and, and this is still, let's say, not that well-defined and then, uh, let's say, fixed uh, in the literature. So it's something that we are still trying to define. And there are, as I said, many research groups working on that. Thank you once more, uh, Roberto, for your time. And we... Thank you for the invitation. Thanks. We will continue with uh, our next speaker, is my colleague uh, Jelena Brajkovic uh, from Faculty of Architecture. And she was the vice leader of the working group five. So, Jelena, please. Hello. Mm. Just uh, to find my presentation and to um, share it. Yes, okay, you can see it now. Um, uh, I am happy to speak in person in front of the audience we have here in Belgrade and also audience via Zoom. So I will be short and sweet and conclude uh, this morning part that was dedicated to Restore. So I come from the University of Belgrade, Faculty of Architecture, and in Restore I was VG5 Vice Leader, also STSM and ITC Coordinator, uh, tools that Tatiana mentioned for attending conferences or events regarding, of course, uh, Restore topics and short-term scientific missions in which uh, researchers or people from the practice goes from one work environment to another uh, to the member states of cost and, uh, and learn uh, how to and exchange knowledge with uh, colleagues from other countries. So I will be talking about scale jumping topic. So we were the concluding uh, working group of the Restore. So what we wanted to introduce in the whole discourse and also look forward was this uh, idea, of course, of scale jumping, not only in, uh, in, 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 uh, in um, even material sense and not even uh, in, in architectural sense or the spatial sense, but also uh, through the time and all the other scales that actually we can think of when uh, thinking about regenerative discourse and also we wanted to introduce systems thinking which would mean that all these uh, how to say fragmented things or expertises that you heard how can we actually uh, deal with them in a systemic way and uh, really achieve some significant change uh, in practice and also in academia through thinking uh, hybridly so what we were uh, we, we, what we were uh, exploring in VG5 through our many participants, over 80 people from academia and also from practice, we dealt of course with the interactions, which was actually the analysis, uh, then we dealt with the tools, platforms and metri metrics, which uh, had more things to do with, uh, with implementation and practice than with uh, analysis and research. So here I'm showing you VG5 infographics, where you can see first, of course, our mission, which is exploring scale jumping potentials through neighborhood, city and society-wide level regenerative sustainability, including analysis, solutions and implementation. As I mentioned, scale jumping not only in size, but also in quality. So you can see here we uh, were thinking, which I will present uh, uh, through my uh, other slides, uh, how can we think beyond the building scale and also how can we influence more people, target new audiences and topics uh, of that kind. So of course here research potentials, market potentials and yes, upscale networks. You can see our main image of, of, of uh, this uh, uh, this uh, diagonal, let's say, uh, relationships, and also you can see subtasks that we uh, had uh, different subgroups organized about around it, and uh, they all dealt with different topics. So human, human, human built environment, nature built environment. Then all three, of course, in in this nexus: nature, human, and built environment. Then uh, topics of mostly dealing with technologies and also legislation. That was our concluding subtask. Uh, of course, as outcomes, we also have a booklet which is about to be published. And yes, please download it uh, on. 
Moscow website. Then we had the sustainability special issue dedicated to our to our goals and our topics, uh, and of course short-term scientific missions that I mentioned, where you can see on the screen uh, which were the main uh, research area and topics that were how to say recommended for short-term scientific missions. Uh, you can see that we had training school in Vienna in September. This was held in hybrid mode, and here I would say that whole VG5 was specific in its work since we started uh, at the same time as the pandemic, so most of the work was done online, uh, but we had some tools available for us, and I must really thank to everybody because people were really motivated to uh, still uh, remain sharing, although uh, times were completely changed. Also. Of course, uh, we were in a way um, intrigued with uh, many new topics, also worried about many new problems that COVID uh, brought to the uh, not only uh, working conditions, but also built environment. So new, let's say, uh, new uh, parts of thinking started to appear how we can actually deal with the urban environment in more humane, more uh, uh, more well-being uh, way. So you can see here also the structure of the people that participated and Andras Wright and myself as leads. Uh, here I'm showing you the book that is about to be published where me and Andras were editors and where all this work uh, is actually shown. So if you are interested in any of these topics that you can see on the screen, uh, please download it. So first part dedicated to, of course, the analysis where we dealt with this systems thinking and how can we actually, uh, uh, what can we find in all these interactions, uh, what, what kind of potential we can find for future research and future directives, how can we think outside of the box, then of course tools, platforms and metrics, and this practical exercise that we actually did in Vienna in uh, district, one district where urban renewal was uh, was, uh, uh, was how to say, uh, commissioned. Okay, I will go back to that. So uh, about the scale jumping, I will give just a few thoughts that are, uh, that are uh, showing you the whole idea. So um, what I also wanted to, 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 to emphasize here is, of course, the relationship between the built environment and the rise of technologies. As I myself finished PhD in new media architecture, so this, this, um, this uh, whole, uh, let's say, new media and digital media um, uh, rise, of course, gave us uh, something new to the built environment, but not only, let's say, at this stage, always was the, digi uh, the technological development that dealt, that actually drive uh, the, uh, the um, uh, the, the looks and, of course, uh, all parameters of the built environment. So printing media, of course, gave us standardization of design, so architectural images were suddenly, uh, how to say, replicable all over the world, and we, uh, we, uh, it was possible then to apply the same design uh, all around the globe. So then we had industrial revolution, standardized production and manufacturing, which gave us something which uh, Mario Carpo calls standardized visual environments. So you have in many cities, also here at our new Belgrade, you can see very standardized visual uh, visual environments that uh, that is now slowly changing with the rise of digital and new media, which are driving to a paradigm shift and going towards the stage of non-standard technologies, variability, emergent theories of organic forms, uh, overall customization, interactivity, and digitally supported participative design. So we are coming to the age of of how to say this, this variable, uh, the variable possibilities and also, uh, uh, let's say, um, um, omnipresent design transfers. So now architects are becoming, uh, uh, are becoming programmers, programmers are becoming architects in a way. Also, you can design interfaces of the behavior of the systems, which are now built environment and uh, things like that. So we have to deal with that. Other interesting point, of course, for future, uh, for future, uh, for future um, research is, of course, this uh, connectivity. Uh, so we are in our society are becoming less and less uh, determined by objects and increasingly shaped by connectivity. And I think we all experience this. And uh, with these networks and the high tech environment, there is no longer a binary opposition between town and country, urban and rural. And again, this is something which became very important in terms of COVID, and uh, Roy Ascot even calls this connectedness a new principle of life. 
and even an evolutionary stage in human development. And also uh, he calls it a new skill, a new skill to survive, because uh, of course in the history of human development there were different skills that were important uh, at the moment, but now we are dealing with new set of skills or very uh, connected to technologies. And uh, what will this mean for the design of our built environments? And what does it all have to do with nature and regenerative design and sustainable design? So we must be aware of the technologies, both as media and tool. So not only as a tool, but as uh, something that mediates our environments. But can technology actually bring us back to nature in a new way? Yes, because we, are, we will of course not go, we will of course not go uh, uh, back to nature in a way that we were sometimes connected to it. We have to go, uh, uh, after the rise of digital media in a new way, in a way uh, that we can try to lead a simple life, a healthy life, uh, have uh, healthy environments, but we, of course, be technologically supported. So here I will uh, just uh, quote Ralph Nuhta from Drift that he says, and he calls this a sustainable technological support to the reconnected future. It is something which is possible and uh, we really need to reconnect the, uh, the nature and the humanity through the media, through technologies, one curated way, and actually achieve achieve some of the, let's say, recommended res recommended attributes of biophilic design, which is becoming more and more important in regenerative discourse, and which acknowledges, which acknowledges actually this humane innate. Uh, need for nature and this connection to nature. We all experience that we need uh, to be in the nature, we need to look at the nature, we need uh, to integrate nature in our urban environments in the way we can. And especially in the future, when we might have limitations in movement, how can we do this? Here, I think you can see a list of uh, biophilic attributes. I am not going to talk much about them. You can see they can be very different from some very simple one, presence of colors, water, air, sunlight, but they can be more abstract ones, like place-based relationships, for example, where through our design of the built environments, we must respect historic connection to place, ecological, cultural connection to place, similar attributes, and we come to something which we can call a spirit of place, and of course, avoiding placelessness. Uh, there, there is uh, many, many very useful, uh, let's say, both publications and guidelines, very practical toolboxes to deal with biophilic design. Uh, here I also uh, presented uh, Terrapin Bright's Green 14 patterns of biophilic design, which really, really should be always, uh, always in the mind of architects and designers and urban planners when, uh, when actually uh, designing, of course, our built environments. To come back uh, after this uh, small overview uh, to uh, what we uh, have been doing, uh, I mentioned already interactions. And here you can see the, this uh, scale jumping nexus that we worked on through patterns. Martin uh, mentioned patterns like these that we have, again, very usable in practical work of, 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 of uh, anybody who is dealing with any actually phase of, of implementing uh, regenerative uh, goals to uh, built environments. So we can here uh, see some of the scale jumping interventions and recommendations and also something came out of the work of this subgroup and that is Restored 2030, which can actually uh, become a standpoint for a future uh, projects and future, uh, future in-depth analysis of these topics. So then we have built human and built environment interactions. Here we have more or less, uh, more or less theoretical and practical uh, both examples, case studies, research. You can see the, some of the, how to say, structure of the research in scale jumping nat nature uh, built environment interactions. We again dealt with the issue of scale and how can small urban hacks actually achieve big impact? Uh, or can we tackle major urban challenges through aquacultural smallness? Smallness, and here many case studies were presented in a very, very short and uh, informative way. So, digital tools to support uh, district regenerative design and scale jumping. Here we, we dealt with topics you can see. 
Uh, then, of course, smart technologies, which is very important in the context of regenerative design. We must use data, and of course, many of European cities are actually becoming more and more not only digitalized, but also open access to many of the data that can actually help us in, uh, in, in, in producing some really um, efficient solutions and, and, and create districts that are actually uh, good for people, good for uh, nature, in a way that nature-based solution applied there are, how to say, adequate for the uh, for the also social, cultural, let's say, uh, milieu of the of the of the certain districts or cities. So we just have to have all of these things in mind. Emerging technologies. Uh, are dealing with, uh, of course, uh, uh, new new technologies that can again shape a completely different experience of of the built environments. So see, here you can see even the project, the idea of uh, completely 3D printed habitats and innovative eco housing. So uh, design frameworks, uh, we also dealt with that. Uh, so which design uh, frameworks we can use and achieve which results and which is more or less effective to, uh, to a certain context applied. And of course, EU policy documents for green uh, transition and where is uh, Europe uh, and uh, how this can be approved and further, and further, um, and, and, and further imp really implemented in, in practice and how is it going actually in, in, uh, in, um, in Europe. Uh, with that. So, uh, as the last point is, of course, our practical exercise that I mentioned, which was also a conference in Vienna, Austria, in September. Uh, we did it all. We really tried to uh, deal with all parameters that are important for the, overall, uh, for the overall experience of the city life, which we call the good urban life. Uh, we had 16 trainees, international trainers, one exhibition, site visit, we dealt with the urban renewal of an existing neighborhood. This is topic which is for every city, I think, uh, interesting as uh, there are always different districts that have different values and then can be brought to a uh, surface in a specific way. You just have to approach it integrally and actually uh, think through all these aspects that we had uh, trainers in and we dealt with and that is urban design of course and architecture circular design landscape design social design uh, ah circular design two times okay uh, social design in a way that we were also dealing with as i said social cultural background of the district of the city itself and which for example solutions would be used by which uh, groups uh, and uh, how can we also deal with this, as we said, geographical connection to place, cultural, historical, and, city, and uh, similar. So, so, uh, so uh, social cultural relations, circular considerations, and biophilic attributes, as, as to, 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 to say it in short. Um, last uh, slides of mine is actually uh, STSMs that are very important for the for the life of the action. Is the uh, we had. Uh, in each uh, working group, different, of course, uh, let's say, accent. And here in VG5, as we were actually dealing with all them together, looking towards the future, we had uh, even nine active uh, STSMs that, as you can see, deal with different topics, very different topics from energy efficiency through smart cities to holistic urban uh, living. So all together, I would say I'm also uh, uh, doing an STSM in, in Vienna, and uh, we are get dealing with uh, urban renewal issue on another district in Vienna, merging with uh, training school uh, results, and we will bring it back to Belgrade in September, uh, when we will have also with the Cultural Center of Belgrade a uh, dedicated panel to the topic of good urban life. And with this, I, uh, I'm concluding my, my, my uh, presentation and also the uh, work group flow from Restore. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Elena, for your presentation. Very comprehensive work. Uh, I have one question for you. If uh, maybe first class, if somebody in the audience has a question for you, Elena, or in the chat, just to check. No, there is no question. So. Just to tell me, what about uh, up to the end of the restore? How to follow up? Well, that is um, that is an inspiring question, let's say, and. Uh, 
I think that um, there are many topics that can be a follow-up of Restore, as Restore was one of, I think, very uh, broadly, broadly um, and versatile action when there were many topics that can be further further ex uh, examined in depth. Uh, in my, again, opinion, I think this is this scale jumping topic and, of course, many different applications, very practical applications that we can bring to urban uh, environments. And, of course, after everything that happened with COVID, I think that we can uh, dedicate uh, some, some uh, thoughts to, again, this well-being, health, and how to live um, how to live uh, with with technologies, but in let's say a biophilic way to really try to return to nature in a new in a new way. So, something uh, around these topics can surely be uh, organized. Okay, thank you. Elena. Thank you. So we arrived to to the uh, lunch uh, pause. Uh, I would like to invite you to have a lunch with us but it's not possible uh, it will be I, I think that we are on time so see you half past one uh, we continue with our other speakers thank you very much <laughs>